We don't click up according to race. We don't. So if you're a white dude and you come in and somebody wants you, you better be able to handle your own because the white dudes ain't coming to save you. On the road to riches, you're bound to miss a few turns. Then let the bridges that you cross be the bridges you burn. <laughs> Man, you already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life and we're back. I feel blessed. I feel happy. I feel tired. Damn, I'm tired. You ever just ache in every single body part you have, like, just ache? Been real busy lately, so I'm so blessed and happy to be able to drop today's video, which I hope keeps one of y'all safe in the long run. I told y'all about the move. It has been so much. You just cannot depend on people to do things right. Now, the house we just got is a beautiful house, massive house, sits on the lake, yada, yada, yada. The painters did a terrible job. Whoever, the, the, the banker, whoever used, they used to paint this house, it don't look like they painted anything. So we have legitly gone through and repainted everything. I was there all weekend, had the painters there all weekend. They're there again today, we're painting all the trim, we're painting all the walls. Painting my son's room the colors he wants them. Painting accent walls. So we've been crazy, 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 crazy busy. Like, we have enough stuff to fill up two full-size U-Haul trucks. To have a closet full of sneakers. Like a closet. I spent hours just boxing. And all my sneakers stay in the box. Putting those in the boxes to keep them safe. Hours just boxing up sneakers. Then the hats, I have big, ginormous, extra large boxes, completely packed full of hats. So if you're wondering where I've been, let me see, 60 plus hours last week at work, leave work, go home, kick it with my kids a little bit, talk with the wife a little bit, boom, head out to the new house, work there till after midnight, some nights I'm getting home, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. Get the shower, jump into bed, alarms are going off, 6 o'clock, back up, back out the door to work, and that has been life. I downsized on the guys, and getting rid of so many guys, employees, profits skyrocketed. It's like when you cut the unnecessary expenses, and some guys become unnecessary expenses. If you're not doing your job, you're an unnecessary expense. If you are not creating more money than what you're making, then it's a no-brainer. There's no point in having you here. So I'm letting a lot of guys go and keeping the guys that I felt I should have, oh, we have maximized profits. But it's also put tools in my hands nonstop. So when I used to be sitting here making these videos, kicking it with y'all, laughing, joking, cranking out five, six, seven videos sometimes a week, that was because I had guys I could depend on. I had plenty of guys to do the work. But now, I've got to make sure the product I push is the best product there is out there. And we do push the best product there is out there when it comes to flipping houses. I'm very OCD and meticulous when it comes to flipping houses. That's where I have been. I've been flipping the house I'm in because that house now has to go back on the market as well as flipping the house I'm moving to because, well, that's my house. With all that being said, y'all saw the thumbnail. You might get close to somebody and think that dude's all right. There are a lot of telltale signs to let you know exactly who you're messing with. There's a lot of little indicators when it comes to these weirdos. There are signs with some of these guys. In prison, it's almost, the signs are almost always there. I can't speak for the real world because we've all heard things that it's just like I never saw that coming he was the nicest guy or he was this or he was that but in prison I have noticed time and time again there are certain things about that man that lets you know what type of time he's on there are warning signs that go off all day every day when it comes to him and then when he does what he does nobody's really shocked now, I've heard in other states where they say, oh, we'd have got him up out of here. 
That's that state. The East Coast, we are on a mind your business type. That's how we politic. Mind your business. That ain't got nothing to do with you. Mind your business. He's a man, you're a man. He needs to handle his own. We don't click up according to race. We don't. So if you're a white dude and you come in and somebody wants you, you better be able to handle your own because the white dudes ain't coming to save you. There's a lot of fighting over here. And I mean a lot, a lot of fighting. That's why I have so many stories. There's a lot of fighting. There's a lot of violence. When you have those politics in place, like, say, like Cali does in uh, Arizona and Texas and, you know, Las Vegas and Nevada and all that, when you have those type of politics, it'll make a man think twice before he does something to another man. When you remove those politics and make it pretty much... It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. You came in here on your own. You're going to leave out on your own. You got to take care of your own and defend your own. It changes the dynamics. It really does. If you're not in the gang, listen to me. If you're not in the gang, you ain't got no type of protection. You have to defend, rely on yourself. Because nobody is going to come to your aid. Nobody is going to come running when you scream help. Unless you got some solid homeboys. Unless the dudes you rock with hear about it. If I rock with you and somebody's trying to do something to you, I'm coming. 1,000% I'm coming. Head first. Diving head first into whatever you got going on. Because you're my people. And I'm going to look out for you. But a lot of guys ain't got no people. A lot of guys want to go in there and that lone wolf type stuff. They want to be the, the standoffish guy. The guy that don't speak to nobody. Oh, I'm just going to do my time by myself. Okay, okay, you do that. And when somebody pushes up on you and says, Hey, what's up, girl? Huh. You look nice in those jeans. What you gonna do? You ain't got no homeboys, you ain't got no friends. You look around for help and everybody's looking at you like, Oh, you wanna talk to us now? But there are signs. And that's what we're gonna get into. The signs that let you know that that man is up to no good. Now, this is not something I have lived, but it's definitely something I've seen. I've lived around it. Never personally been on that end of it. I always carried myself in a manner that lets others know that's not somebody you want to mess with. Not saying I'm 10 foot tall. Not saying I'm King Kong. Not saying I'm untouchable. But somebody, a man like that is going to go after somebody he knows that he can overpower, that's not going to fight back. That's not going to try to take him up out of here before he comes at me. Because he knows for fact what I'm going to do if he tries me. It's not going to just be an easy transaction where he goes on about his business. No. I'm going to take you up out of here. And if you succeed at doing what you try to do, you need to go ahead and just take me out right then and there. Because after that moment's done and complete, my mission in life is to make sure that you are no longer on this earth. And due to the fact that I'm out here as a free man, well, that tells you that was a situation I never had to deal with. But it happens, and it happens every single day. You might be watching this and have pending case, pending charges, court coming up. You might be headed off to prison. The things I'm going to tell you today, accompanied with some stories, they're going to ring a bell in your head when you see them. When you see guys do certain things, you're going to be like, that's what he was talking about. That's him right there. And it might just be what keeps you and your from getting clapped. But all that being said, I know that was a long opening. Had to fill y'all in. You know I'd have seen it. You know I'd have lived it. So let's relive it. That's crazy. Believe it or not, that's a joke amongst inmates. It's not a real thing. If you drop your soap in the shower, you're not going to pick that soap up. You're not going to walk over and bend over and pick that soap up. Number one, the prison bathroom, the, the shower area, the floor, is one of the nastiest places on the face of earth. Men go in there when no one else is around and they handle their business. Then, ah, man, couples go in there 
when nobody else is around, usually late night when uh, everybody knows not to go back there and they handle their business and everybody's business is on the floor. I've seen guys, everything you can think about goes down in the shower. You do not pick soap up that if that soap hits the floor, that soap stays on the floor. I don't care what brand it is, how much it costs you. You're not ever going to pick that soap up and put that back on your skin. No. You'll go in the shower at times, and there'll be four or five bars of soap laying right on the floor. And there's a little trough. The water flows down. There's a little trough with a little lip all the way against the edge of the wall where the water pours down into. You'll see whole bars of soap in there. You're not picking that up. If you drop your rag on that floor, you are now a rag short. You're not picking that up. So I'm glad we got to clear up the whole don't drop the soap uh, myth, I guess you would call it. It's not a real thing. Has it happened? I'm sure it has. What hasn't happened is 2023. It's not much that hasn't happened at this point. But no, that's not a thing. Number one, number one on my list of things to look out for. Staring, the eyes, someone that's constantly watching you. I have seen this with every single predator I've ever come across. Every single predator I've ever witnessed do what they do had one thing in common. They had a lot of things in common, but number one being them staring. They will sit and look at whoever it is that they're plotting on and lock eyes with that person. You might scan the room and go, oh, what's he staring at me for? When you look away, you look back over and he's still staring at you. He just nod at me. Hey, what's up? How you doing? The stare. I've seen this with guys that were looking to get at other guys. And I've also seen this when it comes to the predators and the females in the control booth. These guys would sit out there for hours at a time, salivating at the mouth with their eyes locked in. I'm talking just staring. Now, guys are going to look at you. You're the new guy. So people want to get a feel for you. But there's a difference between checking somebody out, like just getting a feel for who that guy is, looking in that guy's direction. If you want a guy to make eye contact, common courtesy is for the other man to look away. Otherwise, that's, there's a, a level of disrespect. They eyeballing you. You mean mugging me. Nobody's supposed to keep making eye contact with you. So if you see a man that's constantly staring at you, automatically something is going on. There's a reason he's staring at you. Unless you have big crazy tattoos all over your face, some type of deformation, an ear growing out of the side of your lip, something weird with you, there should be no reason that somebody stares at you. These guys are infamous for that. They will stand in their doorways of their cells and look out at whoever it is they're plotting on. When they're out and about in the day room, in the pod, in the dorm, they will stare and they will plot. You'll be on the rec yard walking and you'll walk by the guy and you'll see him stare at you. I've seen this lead up to very violent altercations. I've seen it to where it should have been stopped right when that guy noticed that he was being stared up and down. Jingling walked up on a guy one time that was in the shower. He stared at this young white dude all day. We've talked about Jingling. We're going to talk about Jingling some more. Jingling stared. Jingling was, let me, let me back up. Jingling and... No disrespect, Jingling, and rest in peace to the late, great James Brown. Jingling looked like, that's the best way to describe it. James Brown with his hair slicked back and it thinning. And he also, you remember the movie, Blood In, Blood Out? This guy? That's the socks for you. He reminded me of him as well. But Jingling had a habit of staring at guys that he was going to go after. And when they looked at him, he'd smile. How's he staring at me for? Why does he keep smiling? Is he, is he remedial? Is there something wrong with his brain? Like, man, homeboy's always staring. You might want to go tighten him up. You might want to go check him and ask him what he keeps staring at if you're built like that. Because you might go over there and ask him what he's staring at and he might beat you all the way up. He's a known cheek clapper. That's what he did. That was his reputation. He goes up on a guy one day in the shower. I watch this guy. Everybody's going to chow. This guy doesn't go to chow. This guy decides he doesn't want to eat whatever they got over there. He's got plenty of commissary in his box. He's going to whip something up, take it to the microwave while everybody else is over the chow eating food. And he is in the shower. 
and we're waiting to go out. There's a whole bunch of us congregating up in the front at the door, waiting to go out. We're hungry. As soon as they pop that gate, we're going to get out of there. We'll make our way over to Chow Hall, get in line, get our trays, sit at our tables, the whole feeding process. But this dude is in the shower up front. Now, there's two showers on the bottom tier, and there's three on the top, and they're single stall showers. It's got a door that swings open, and it's a half stall door. So you can see from the knees down and about the chest up and the midsection is covered by a brown door. We're standing there talking amongst each other, jingling, standing off in this ice machine right there, jingling, standing beside the ice machine. And you scan the room and you see him. He's kind of in the cut looking at the shower. He has no shame in his game. He doesn't. Everybody knows what he does. Everybody knows what he's up to. We have all watched him watching him. For a couple weeks now, he has been staring at this dude. He's approached this guy, and this guy just ain't picked up on the fact that he's trying to be more than just my buddy. A dude is in the shower. Dude is lathered up. In the shower and getting his shower on, Jingling makes his move in front of all of us. Now, I don't think he had any intent on actually doing anything. I think he was just taking it to the next level. He was a younger dude. Jingling walks up on the shower and looks inside the shower, looks over the door. At this dude that is standing there, washing himself covered in soap. And you hear a little bit of, hey, what up, what are you, blah, 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 blah. And then the stall door comes open, and dude comes out the stall, with all his goodies out for the world to see, and just commences to swing it. And all of a sudden the control booth starts banging on the glass, and as quick as it started, it ended. Now, at the time, Jing Ling had surgery on his leg, so his leg was in this cast, and he was walking with his with this one crutch underneath his arm all awkward. Jing Ling was trying to hobble back. Just violated that man. There is no this is done. Like, I've got to do something to you because we all just watched him do that. But it all started with the, with the eyeballing, with the staring. If somebody's looking at you and the looks they're giving you makes you feel uncomfortable, if they're looking at you for too long, they continue to stare after you've looked back at them, that's somebody you might want to check out. That's somebody you might want to keep an eye on and not turn your back on. Because if he's watching you while you're watching him, he's watching you while you're not watching him. That's number one on my list is the staring that these guys do. He came out that stall like a Tasmanian devil covered in soap with shower shoes on. These little rubber flip-flops. Soap still all over him. Dude did exactly what he was supposed to do. Anything else is unacceptable at that point. Had he not come out that shower, he might as well open the door and say, hey, come on in. But he didn't. <clears throat> Went straight at him. Watch for anybody that stares at you for too long. Next on my list, somebody being over-friendly. Now, when you come in, the person you're going to make friends with first, if you're in a dorm, is going to be the person you bunk with. If you're in a cell, it's going to be your cellmate. That is usually the first guy you're going to have a conversation with, the first guy you're going to share anything with, talk to, that's going to give you anything. That's pretty normal. But even then, you don't know who you're coming in the cell with, so you need to watch that guy as well. But beware of someone who tries to give you things, someone who's overly doing it when it comes to being friendly. Now, I told the story of Treetop and a dude I knew. Treetop got him by giving him things. We saw it. I saw it. Everybody else saw it. The convicts, the seasoned vets, the ones of us that have been in there for a while, we know what to look for. Nobody is just going to give you a box of cigarettes. Nobody's just going to be giving you Levi jeans, giving you Timberlands, giving you sneakers, giving you TVs, giving you all this stuff. There's a hidden motive. And Treetop 100% had a hidden motive. Lots of these guys do that. They get you in debt or they get you to where you feel comfortable. Oh, I trust him. Man, he's always looking out for me. Man, that's my homeboy. So that when the attack happens... You didn't see it coming. So that you get comfortable around him. Y'all build some type of a what you think is a friendship. And in reality, he's buying you. I've seen it where guys give somebody something and then come. And this is not a myth. I've heard myths on it, but this is a fact. I've seen guys give somebody something under the pretense that they're giving that to them and then return for it. Yeah, take this, homeboy, there you go, yeah, yeah, that's what's up. Hey, yeah, holler at me later. And they watched them either smoke what they gave them 
or eat what they gave them. And then they come back to him 20 minutes later, but hey, yo, let me get that off you real quick. Let you get, get what? What I just gave you. Man, I ate it. You gave it to me. No, no, you wasn't supposed to eat it. I gave it to you the whole. What you, what you mean you ate it? You got to pay for that. Man, I ain't got no money, man. I'm going to pay for it. You got to pay for that. Beware of anybody that tries to befriend you like that. Penitentiary is a dog eat dog world. You're going to do what you got to do to get by. You're going to hustle. Some guys steal. Some guys, you know, wheel and deal. You got hustle men all around you constantly busting moves. You got your guys that are dealing. You got everything going on. But what you really don't got is people just giving you stuff. Now, it's not uncommon. Somebody might look out if they know you're doing bad and throw you a stamp. Damn, he's doing bad. Let me get that dude a soup. Let me get that dude a bag of chips. Let me give him a soda. But ain't nobody about to take you to raise in the penitentiary. No, they're not. So when somebody's constantly giving you something, there ain't a whole bunch of nice guys in there. So you need to be able to see his ulterior motive. Why is he giving me stuff? That's the type of stuff a man does with a woman. You first meet a woman, what do you do? Oh, you take her shopping. You take her to the movies. You take her to dinner. It's the same thing in prison. That man's feeding you. He's giving you this. He's giving you that. And you think he's a nice guy. You are in prison and you think he's a nice guy. Nah. Baiting you right on in. And you jumped up, bit the hook, and he's reeling you right on in. Treetop gave that dude everything. And I seen it from the gate. And it's sad. It still haunts me to this day that I tried to warn him. I broke the prison rules by even speaking on it. I put myself in harm's way by even forewarning him of what was to come. I told him, I said, no, no. Give that stuff back to that man. I don't care. Give it back to him. Whatever you've taken, take it back to him and tell him you don't want it. No, man, me and the treetop is cool. You're not cool, man. Dude is going to, do you know what he have you heard about? I know what he does. He was over here. He did it. I can tell you a list of guys he did that to. That is his M.O. And this dude did not listen to me. I saw him on the wreck yard. The nice jeans. The nice shoes. The fresh wife beater and the white tee. And all this stuff. Packing a pack of new points in his hand. You just got here and you got nothing. And a ginormous man. A ginormous Debo looking man. Is giving your little dumb self stuff for free? He's giving you stuff for free because you and him have so much in common, right? You're his homeboy, right? You can't see what he's doing. He's buying you. All this is just the, the build up. This is the, the, the date. And you don't even see it. He's whining and dining you. That ended really, really bad. I would see that guy later on. He'd been beat up pretty bad. And the rumors started. And when I first, when I, when I tried to warn him in the, in the beginning, he didn't have all that stuff. Then when I talked to him again, he was all dressed up, had all that stuff on. Yeah, you were dressed up. Just like a man would dress his girl up. You want your girl to look good, right? Go make sure she got nice shoes, nice clothes, nice pocketbook, makeup, smells good. Oh, he had that dude on display walking around, looking fresh in prison. You didn't have nothing. And it wouldn't be long before he wasn't. He was looking fresh. But not like a man would. No. He was looking fresh like a female would. The nice Levi's he had on, they changed sizes. They went from being his size to being three sizes too small. He went from being his normal self to looking like a boy. He didn't listen. He got out. And what I heard... He moved, he's got a family now. And like I said, I would never, ever tell his name. Some people that I do know do know exactly who this guy is. People out here that I know know exactly who he is because they were in there with me when it happened. And they saw it as well. I've seen guys give everything from, from stuff that's illegal, tobacco, personal property, CDs, tape players, CD players, televisions, clothing, food, I seen a guy, God, with jingling, 
get turned out for a bag of chips and a soda. And Jingling did it with the door open. On the top tier, and we came in from wreck. I'm walking in, trying to rush to get to my cell. I want to get my shower stuff and, and get in the shower and beat the shower line before everybody else. Hey, who got it? Who's, who got in the shower after you, Jay? I'm trying to hurry to get to the shower. And as I'm coming across the pod, I look up, and what I saw changed me. What I saw, it's burned into my retinas. It's burned into to the front of my brain. As I looked up, I seen a guy that I knew, that I never expected in a million years. Standing in that cell with Jingling. Jingling was standing behind him. You could fill in the rest. He came out and he sat down at the table. This is another guy that knew better than to accept things. He got hungry. That's what it looked like. That's all it was. And he went up there. And he was paid a bag of chips and a soda. And when it was all said and done... Everybody seen him jingling, did it with the door wide open for the whole pod to see. <laughs> hey, you don't mind if I keep you under my wing for a little while, you know? I mean, I gotta take care of you, right? But he came out there and he sat down at the table. And I remember, I guess I was more or less just being funny. Because I couldn't really believe what I just saw. I walked up, I said, Dan, you eating good, man? Let me get some. You want some? You go get it like I got it. That ended really, really, really bad. And prior to that, jingling had been baiting him. Giving him soups, giving him chips, giving him sodas. Then we had a stretch where we didn't go to commissary for a very long time, and we were starving in there. Obama had just become president. All these budget cuts came into place, and the budget cuts hit the prison hard. They cut everything in half. Our meal portions got cut in half. It's already just enough on that tray to sustain life. And then they, boom, cut the, the portions right in half. Everything, you went from getting a scoop to getting a spoonful. So we would all walk around hungry if you didn't have commissary. So Jingling fed him, kept giving him things, giving him things, giving him things. So he got used to that. Then he went to him one day and said, damn dog, I'm hungry, man. You know, we ain't been in the store in a minute. I'm starving. Oh yeah? Yeah, I got, I got, I got chips, I got soups, I got all that. You hungry, you know what it is. That was a different kind of situation where he didn't force it. But it all started with him giving him things. You need to be smart enough to see things for what they are. Prison is not packed full of nice guys. They're not out here just gathering all the nice guys into a crowd and sending them off to prison. The worst of the worst of the worst go to prison. The guys you see on the news, the guys that commit heinous acts, shooting last night, 10, 20, whatever, that guy, he goes off to prison. That guy is in prison right now. You break the law, you are going to see that guy. And all the guys before him that did that. There are guys in there with heinous, heinous acts. So to go in there thinking that somebody's looking to give you something, let me put it to you this way. Yeah, they're looking to give you something, all right? But it ain't going to be something you want. Be wary of anybody that's constantly trying to give you things. Third and final thing on my list Listen, listen to the guys around you, pay attention, but most importantly, listen. If you can't see it for yourself, listen to what others say. You don't put a bad bone on somebody, that's what we call it, you put a bad bone on me. You don't speak on the next man. But if somebody has told you something like that about somebody, just saying that about a person and it not being true, is grounds for that man to take you up out of here so if somebody's come to you and told you hey you need to be careful of that dude hey that dude does this he does that it's almost guaranteed that's exactly what he does nobody's going to approach you and say that about somebody unless it's true because if it makes its way back to that man that that man said that about that man that right there can get that man completely done taken up out of here you don't speak on the next man. You definitely don't talk about the next man. And if you do talk about the next man, you better make sure that whatever you're saying is right. Because if it's wrong and it gets back to him, he's going to come for you. If it's right and it gets back to him, he's going to come for you. So when somebody says, hey, dude, he's no good. Dude is a weirdo. Dude wants to get at you. Stop. Listen. Pay attention. He's telling you that for a reason. 
disassociate yourself, distance yourself. Now, a lot of guys, they don't understand how to get out of a situation like that. First things first, if you're in a cell with them, move. Go to the administration. Hey, I'm not feeling the guy y'all got me in a cell with, man. Y'all need to move me. We're not going to move you. Y'all need to move me now. If they say they're not moving you, don't lock down. Refuse to go back in the cell with him. When they call count time, you grab your personal belongings, drag them out to the table, and you sit right down. Now they're going to do one of two things. They're going to lock you up for interfering with count, and you're going to the hole. You're going to come out the hole, and you're going to go into a new cell. Or they're going to say, you know what, just move him, man, so we can go on with the count. Most likely they're going to lock you up. But I promise you this part. You would rather be in the hole, locked up. That definitely beats the uh, the other option, which is being locked in the cell with that man and him uh, deciding to attack. Everybody's not going to fight. My advice to you would be fight. Let it be known. Do it so everybody can see it. Make sure everybody sees it. Make sure everybody hears it. And everybody knows that you're going to get down for yours. That is going to cut a whole lot of the guys trying you guys, coming at you out the way. When somebody knows that, all right, he'll swing for his. All right, he'll fight for his. Win, lose, or draw, he's going to get down for his. That guy that was staring at you, that guy that was plotting on you, he's going to think twice. He doesn't want to go with somebody that's going to potentially break his nose, black his eye, beat him up, flip the script on him. No, he's going to go down the path of least resistance. He wants to go against somebody that's that's scary. He's going to run up on somebody that, please don't hurt me, that's going to ball up. So if you've got it in you to fight, the moment you find out that's what that man does, lump him up. Even if he ain't done it to you, lump him up for the ones he has done it to. Lump him up just for the thought of maybe thinking that he wants to think that he thinks that he thinks he's going to do that to you. Lump him up. But make sure you do it with the door open. Because if things go left and he gets the better hand on you, if he gets the upper hand on you, well, you might have set out to set a point. You might have set out to, to whoop him in that cell and show him you ain't going to do this to me. What happens if you can't whoop him? That cell door is locked. And he's now knocked you out on the floor. And everything you set out to stop from happening, you wake up to it happening. That's why I say you got several options in this matter. You get up out the cell or you handle it like a man. Go at him with everything you got and try to take his block up off his shoulders and let him know, don't try me. When these type of guys approach you, nip it in the bud. I've had to do it. I've had, when I first got to Greensville, I had a plexiglass knife. I didn't have a real knife yet, but I had a plexiglass knife. I would get a, a real knife, a serious knife, because after I seen what everybody else had and I seen what was going on around me, I got me a real blade. But when I got there, I had a plexiglass one. And my introduction to Jingling, I lived in cell 120, Jing lived in cell 119 with his brother Will. Will was a, another hustle man. He used to sell these little prayer bottles of oil. But I had been warned about Jing Ling prior to ever even knowing who Jing Ling was. And I took heed to the warning. Actually, it freaked me all the way out when dude told me what he told me. It put me on high alert. I mean, just like all my spider senses were tingling. Every alarm in my body went off in the moment I looked over and seen him. He fit the description, the smile, everything about him, just he, he, trying to look all super friendly. I saw for what it was. And we have a yellow line drawn at our door, and you are not allowed in another inmate cell. Going in that cell is called an unauthorized area. Here in Virginia, it's a charge. He comes to my cell, introduces himself. I wasted no time on letting him know what it was. I reached in grabbed the plexiglass knife, pulled the knife out, and told him, get away from my cell. He continued to try to talk, and I advanced towards him with it in my hand, letting him know right then, right there, I'm I'm not the one. You're not going to do this to me. You're not going to do what you've done. To, I didn't say that, but that's what that knife let him know. You're not about to do that to me. So I advanced towards him. He, hey, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you doing? I'm just trying to be the friendly neighbor. Stay away from my cell, man. Don't come back over to my cell. And he never tried me. But I watched him not only try, but succeed in getting at a whole lot of different men in the years I was around him. Never once did he come at me sideways. Because right from the gate, 
I listened to what everybody told me. Even after I got to know him, I never turned my back on him. When I went in my cell, I would push my button and close my door because he did sleep in a cell right next to me. And when my back turned, he could run up in there and you're slump. Don't take a lot to knock a man out. If you've been in fights, you've watched fights and you fought, you know a lot of times it does not take a lot to knock a man out. A lot of times it could just be a lucky shot, boom, right in the chin, right behind the jaw, inside the temple, and you're asleep. You wake up to now being somebody's girlfriend. You wake up and the act has already been done. And I've heard this so many times, and I want to make this very clear to you. I love when I hear people say, oh, you have to kill me? Oh, you have to kill me in a cell. That's what you got to do. You try me, you're going to have to kill. He will. He will. And then he will still go through with what he was going to do. So not only are you going to lose your, you'll lose your life as well. Pay attention to the signs. Watch out for those guys. Listen to the people around you. Watch for the stairs. Watch for the guy trying to give you too much. That guy constantly watching your moves. Why are you watching me? If you're, if you're in my business, you're minding my business, who's minding yours? That means you have become his business. He's always got his eyes on you. Now he wants to befriend you and give you things, draw you in, make you feel comfortable. And then he sets up the attack. And I promise you, somebody has come to you, unless everybody just hates you, somebody has come to you and told you about him prior to it ever getting to that point, and you overlooked everything I just said. There you have it. Three of the top warnings when it comes to dealing with the predators, with the, the booty bandits, the cheek clappers, the weirdos that they are. Now, this is a different world you live in. They're not females running around everywhere. They're female guards. But for the most part, it's not what you think. Most of them ain't doing what you think. For most of them, it's just a job. You got a couple sprinkled in here and there that are hood boogers that are going to get down for a couple dollars or might like your tattoos, might like your, your, you know, the way you carry yourself or your size. You might be at a bag of guard, but chances are you're not. For a lot of these men, it's a power issue. They like the power of knowing that they overpowered another man. They want others to know what they did. And for some of them, they're just despicable. Despicable, despicable, despicable human beings who get off on that type of stuff. Some of these guys don't want that woman. They want you. And I can promise you, I promise you, if you listen to everything I said today, it's going to help you see that guy. As he's watching you, you'll know. As he's plotting and planning and setting everything up, you'll know. You go in there and you take it for a joke. I've seen so many guys come in and they take the penitentiary as a joke. They look at prison as a as, as a fun time. Ha ha, he he, run around kicking it with the homeboys. And then one day something happens and the homeboys kick him to the side and they're just a little duck in a hawk's world. Wandering around by themselves. Ain't nobody around to protect you no more. And somebody decides he wants to make you his. And you don't listen to nobody. You think you're tough? Tough guys get it too. I done seen tough guys get handled. But you can avoid all that. Do what you got to do to keep yourself safe. I'm going to leave you with this. There are a lot of weird people in this world. People deal with this even out in society. There's some mentally messed up people who take advantage of others. You see it in the news. A lot of people have had it happen within their family, with family members doing it to another family member. Prison is very, very common. But it's also one of the things that a lot of guys, when it does happen to them, they won't speak out about it because they don't want to be known as the guy that had that happen to them. But we all know who does it. No sooner than I got there, start talking to guys and they let me know, hey, watch out for him. Hey, do right there. And then as the years would progress, I would be the one warning others. Hey, come here, man. I know you from the streets. Let me holler at you real quick. Old boy you was talking to earlier. Yeah, no, don't do that. And I've had plenty of dudes that did listen to me. But I have one dude that did not. Everything that was talked about in today's video, he dealt with. 
he overlooked. He wanted to believe that in a place filled with the world's worst, that this guy was his friend, that this guy had good intentions. And y'all know how that ended. Stay free, people. Do you have to worry about that in the real world? Yes. But your chances, especially being a man, of having that happen to you are very, very small. Your chances of having something like that happen to you once you get locked up have been multiplied by God knows how many times. Don't break the law. Don't get out here drinking and driving. Don't run the streets thinking you're untouchable because there ain't nobody in this world that's untouchable. The moment you find out that you're touchable might be the moment that you really, really find out that you're touchable. Watch out for them. Stay safe. Use your best judgment. Live your best life. Ain't nothing wrong with being a square. I'm a square as they come. I'm just a regular guy. And I'm okay with that. Live your best life. Think before you act. Maybe you won't never ever have to deal with anything I just talked about. Or look for any of the signs that I just gave to you. But anyways, these jails, these penitentiaries, these facilities, these weirdos the all just crazier worlds inside of a already crazy world we live in and as always y'all know what i'm doing just trying to keep y'all entertained are you not entertained and like always this is jay williams let's live life and to all my real ones and there are some real ones watching because y'all still watching me man y'all know how we do salute Thank <laughs> you.